Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a review of one of the few remaining Arige Ladore fragrances that I have not done a video on this channel about. And this is a very special, special review. I am uh, stoked to do this review, mostly because when you smell as many fragrances as I have, sometimes it gets to be I don't want to say mundane or boring, but you start to smell a lot of the things that just don't impress you anymore. Um, it takes a lot to get me excited. And I'm, I'm being 100% honest with everybody. When I do these reviews, it always comes from the heart. That's the number one thing with my channel. I always wanted this channel to be about my love of perfume. If you Go look at the little blurb I wrote when I started the channel. Like when you click on the YouTube channel, you can read what they say about the channel. Mine is that I want to share my love of perfume with everybody. I love this fragrance. I am in love with this fragrance. I've been testing it these last couple days. Russian Adam sent me a very special decant of his Queer de Russie. And um, my God, I mean, I, so there, it, fucking fuck, man. There are some fragrances that um, are for you. Like, you know, when you smell it, you're like, my God, this fragrance was made for me, right? This is one of those fragrances. And there are a couple others that I've smelled in my journey that I feel that way about. One is Diaghilev. Uh, the other is Bellamy. The other fragrance that I feel like is made for me is Antaeus, right? Those types of fragrances you just don't come across very often where you go, my God, this is for me. Like, this fragrance was made for me, right? And so I actually have a... I sprayed this last night around 8 o'clock at night. Uh, today, at 4 o'clock in the evening, it's now 6. So two hours ago, I resprayed this. Oh, and you know, I could smell it clear as day on, on the strip after all that time. Let me just do a spray and show you, because I want to do a fresh spray on a fresh blotter, because I just want that one to dry down here. So let me just see if I can catch this here without wasting any of this precious juice. Oh my God. So um, I don't know if you can see the color of the blotter changed, right? This is dark stuff. Oh, fuck. So um, if there was such a thing as a nosegasm, this, this would be it. Um, so first of all, let me share my scent of the day because I'm wearing a very rare and maybe the most sought after Queer de Russie fragrance on earth. And it's Chanel's Queer de Russie. This is my scent of the day. And it's a vintage uh, Eau de Cologne. You can see the 75 uh, proof in the back. Uh, we think, we don't know, but we think that this bottle is a late 60s or maybe early 70s bottle, okay? Very hard to come by. I got this from my friend Armando in Italy. Thank you, Armando. I'm going to make an outrageous statement here, okay? But again, I'm speaking from the heart. This is 100% true. I swear to God, I feel this way. Russian Adams Queer de Russie is better. It's better than the Chanel Queer de Russie, which is in my top 10 fragrances of all time. This is more me. This is more me. Um, oh my God, I, uh, I mean, I could just sit up here and just blubber. I could just, just say words that make no sense about this fragrance because it's so good. But here's the issue. So with every good comes a bad, okay? And, um, as absolutely amazing as this fragrance is, this fragrance is a garment perfume. And the reason that it's a garment perfume uh, so it actually comes in a bottle that looks like this. This is um, Agar de Noir, which I reviewed on the channel. Uh, it comes in a bottle that looks exactly like this, but it's silver. So Agar de Noir's detailing was gold, and Queer de Russie's was silver. And literally on the bottle, it says Garment Perfume. And the reason that it says Garment Perfume is because Russian Adam used uh, vintage crude birch tar. Okay, so birch tar, uh, if it's untreated, is actually potentially harmful to uh, humans. So it can be carcinogenic. There are also other risk factors. It can hurt your skin. Um, but so when he made this fragrance, he decided to use the untreated birch tar because he's from Russia and he basically says, hey, we had many nights in 
the Russian winters where we would take, you know, that papery birch tar. Um, we would take the, um, you know, the little bits of the tree. You can almost peel sometimes the bark of the birch tar tree off like a piece of paper. And we would use it to start fires. And that smell of birch tar is very special to me. And so I wanted to use the untreated one because I feel like whenever you go with the uh, treated birch tar that you lose a little bit of it. And you know what? He really may be onto something with that. This is absolutely out of this world, out of this world good. Um, and he says he used a note in here that, he says he used a note in here that he thinks has never been used in perfumery before, to his knowledge. And it's a note called Beaver Tail Oil. Not castorium, Beaver Tail Oil. He says it's like 10 times castorium. And you know what? He might be right. There's some jasmine, violet, blue lotus, and rose in here mixed with natural deer musk, real Siberian deer musk that's ethically harvested with uh, castorium and these other animalic notes, like I talked about vintage um, birch tar, which makes it slightly smoky and uh, leathery. Ugh, I mean, um, so he says there is um, an amber accord in the base as well, but for those of you that don't know Queer de Russie, okay, because here's a Chanel's Queer de Russie, and I don't know if you guys know this, but um, whenever Queer de Russie began to be exported to the rest of the world, basically Russian leather turned into a little bit of a fad, because what ended up happening was, in the 17th and 18th centuries, um, the uh, Russian leather, which is a particular type of leather that was... Uh, treated and processed using birch tar and other oils. They used to use oils from like baby seals and stuff like that. Um, but it, it basically made the leather um, hard yet flexible. So it almost made it feel like it was like indestructible, but it made it flexible for boots and, and um, you know, gloves and stuff like that. And it took over, like it swept the world. The elites of Europe all wanted Russian leather. Uh, you have to remember, this is the 17th and 18th century, right? And, you know, you have to remember what happened to Napoleon at Waterloo, right? And so, you know, the Russian army was thought of as, as one of the greatest fighting forces on earth. Uh, and so whenever Russian leather began to get exported to other countries, places like Germany, for example, renamed Russian leather. They, re they called it Yukten. So, like, for example, this is Kolnish Yukten. This is um, Farina. This is a German version of a Russian leather. Um, and so it's, it's basically a process of tanning a leather with birch that makes it have this very unique smell is basically what it comes down to. Um, and I will tell you right now, right off the bat, 100%, this could be a signature scent for me. If I could spray this on skin, oh my God. I mean, this could be a signature scent and the dry down too is the, I mean, the dry down on paper, it does turn a little bit more powdery and softer, it loses some of that animalic notes, but we're talking 12, 15 hours in, and I can still smell the beautiful vanilla. The vanilla smells like a vintage Guerlain dry down. You know what it smells like to me? Like, here's 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 what I was thinking last night as I was smelling this, and, and my mind was just like, you know, it was just blown, is if you gave this to me and said, Ramsey, this is the long-lost Guerlain Queer de Russie that you've never smelled before. Here it is. I would be like, this is the greatest Guerlain I've ever smelled. I mean, it is that good. It's that unbelievably good. Um, and I'm not just saying that because Russian Adam is a friend. Go watch my review of uh, his Feel Oud fragrance that he put out with Bortnikov. I was not a fan. was not a fan of that. Not that it's a bad fragrance. I just demanded more. Um... This is the kind of stuff I wish he, he could make more of. And, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of Russian leathers I have not smelled, okay? So I'm a huge fan of Russian leather, and I'm going to review the all-time great. This is going to get a Hall of Fame review one day. Chanel's Queer de Russie, the Eau de Cologne, uh, along with the uh, Eau de Toilette, which is actually my favorite version of Chanel's Queer de Russie, the Eau de Toilette. This is a late 80s or early 90s bottle, we think. Um, and the Eau de Toilette version is a little bit more animalic. 
That's why it's my favorite, but the Chanel, the Chanel version of Queer de Russie is much more posh, don't get me wrong. So if you've ever heard me discuss Chanel's Queer de Russie, the way that I describe it in my head is imagine being at a banquet with the most important influential people on earth. They're all there dressed in their greatest outfit, right? The, the nicest gowns, the best tuxedos, you know, the most ornate walking canes and hats and monocles and gloves and all of this. Maybe some of them Russian leather, right? And they're in this ballroom and, and the best chefs in the world have been uh, invited to this event to make this banquet as far as the eye can see. The most brilliant food you could ever imagine, the top of the line uh, drinks, the alcohol's flowing, the um, you know chandeliers are made of real Baccarat crystal, and everything is top of the line. Uh, and you're in this environment where all of the women, you know, even the, the hair of the women, the ladies of the dance who are sitting there dancing, you know, there are people who sit and brush their hair and do their makeup. And, you know, everything from the shoes to the stocking, every detail is just perfect, right? Just absolutely spot on, top of the line, perfect. And then you walk outside and you don't walk outside to electricity and you don't walk outside to a Maybach. You walk outside to a horse and carriage because it's the 1800s. Um, and that's just the way it is. Uh, and, and so you're in that world. And you get into this horse and carriage, and with that horse and carriage comes this animalic side of things. So you're in the most unbelievable ball you could ever be in, but you get into a, a horse and carriage, and you can smell the horn, the animalicness of the horses pulling the carriage, the poop they leave on the ground, right? The un, the unwashed part of the horse, the hair maybe that is a little bit uh, dirty and needs to be washed because they're a damn horse, um, and and so. Uh, you get both sides. That's the Chanel Queer de Russie. Aris Le Doré's Queer de Russie is a completely different animal. This is, I mean, um, this is, this is so much more animalic and so much dirtier. And there's something about that dirtiness in here. There is something about that dirtiness that I am absolutely head over heels for. I don't know what this is. I don't know the 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 process. Um, I don't know what else is in here other than what was listed. But this is an absolute masterpiece. If if I I know it's almost like a sick joke. If I could wear this as a scent on my skin, this could be a signature scent for me. This could be right up there with Bellamy and. Um, Antaeus, seriously, it is that good. If if this could go on skin, this might be the number one Aris Le Dore perfume I've ever I've ever smelled. It's that good. It's that close to my heart. I love this. I love this stuff. It is so damn good. Um, you know what it's like? It's like um, it's it's like nothing I've ever smelled. The birch tar and the animalics in this is like nothing I've ever smelled ever. And you know what's funny is I knew Russian Adam uh, thought he had something special here because he tried to have his people send me a sample of this, uh, and they messed up. And actually, uh, they sent me a little sample of um, Civet de Nuit, which I had already reviewed on the channel. But as soon as he said, send me a picture of what they sent you, because it was unlabeled. And he goes, ah, that's not Coeur de Russie. He knew from the color of the juice they had sent me Civet de Nuit. So this is the like second or third time he's tried to get me to send. Actually, I think even in one of the things I purchased, the History of Oud collection, they asked him to put, he asked them to put a sample and they forgot or something. This is like the third time he's tried to get me this Coeur de Russie. And he asked me uh, on WhatsApp, did you get it? I said, yes. And then he asked me again later, have you smelled it? Like a day or two later. And I knew he was excited for me to smell this because, um, oh my God. I mean, I knew he knew he had something very special here and he's right. Uh, this is, this is, um, you know what this smells like? This, in my mind, this is what I'm thinking about. Old books. But the most beautiful leather-bound books you could ever imagine. You know those Ensar bottles where um, 
that master leather maker makes the um, leather that goes around the bottles by hand of full grain leather. Just imagine him making leather bindings for like the most important books in the world. All of the knowledge in the uh, long lost library of Alexandria, right? Just imagine all of those leather bound books made by hand, smelling it, smelling the years of the book sitting in the library, smelling the leather chair that the general of the most feared army in the world sits in at the end of the day, right? Um, the emperor sits in at the end of the day. He comes home and he rests in that chair after being out in the field, slaughtering his enemies on the battlefield. Then he goes home and sits in that chair and is a loving father. That is the smell of uh, Aris Lodori's Queer de Russi. Um, it smells like horses pulling the most exotic carriage. It smells like leather boots tanned using this uh, Russian leather style. After being broken in by, of course, the birch tar and the seal fat and the piss and all the different stuff that they do, and being worn by the army that, um, you know, defeated somebody like Napoleon, one of the greatest um, armies the world has ever seen. Just imagine this in your mind. Uh, that's what this smells like. It smells like the purse of the baddest bitch on earth. Honestly, it does. It smells like, uh, um, it smells like the gloves of the most talented driver. You know, imagine wearing driving gloves, thin driving gloves, just top of the line leather. It smells like the luggage of the most well-traveled, pampered billionaire you could ever imagine. I mean, it smells, um... To me, this is this is uh, the saddle and reins on the fastest horse in the West. This is all of those things. It's all of those things, and and uh, I mean, this is like smelling to me. This is like smelling history. This pungent animalic smell in this is. Um, I mean, this could bring a tear to my eye. It is absolutely. It's one of the best fragrances I've ever smelled in my entire journey of fragrances. And um, it's, it's, it's almost a sick joke. Literally, it's almost a sick joke that after smelling thousands of fragrances, you find something like this and you can't wear it. Because, well, you could. I mean, you could spray it on clothes, but I don't, I have a, I'm a very, anyone who knows me knows that I'm a very routined person. If it's in the routine, it's in the routine. Like these videos I do for you guys. It's in the routine, so it's happening. If it's out of the routine, I don't even think about it, right? And um, the thing is, is um, my routine with spraying fragrances here, here, right? I'm wearing Chanel's Queer de Russie right here. Uh, and then at night, I'll go here when I test new stuff, right? But I want, I want skin. I want to smell how the fragrance breaks down on skin. Perfume was made for the warmth of your skin. It was made to change on your skin. It was made to blend with your body chemistry. And um, the, the, the thing about fragrance that makes it so special, the mystical part of fragrances, is that you could put a fragrance on your skin and I could put the exact same fragrance on my skin and it smelled different. And so for this, I mean, for, for this to be out there and not to be able for me to put this on skin, it's, it's a sick joke. It literally is like a sick joke from the perfume gods, man. This is so fucking good. It is so fucking good. Um, anyone who loves leather, anyone who loves leather, um, I would urge you to smell this. Smell this if you can. You know, even though I can't wear it, it's unfortunate. I cannot wear it. Um, I, I, would, I would urge Adam to make a... Queer de Russi with the birch tar where we could put this on skin. Even if this lost just a little bit, um, make one where we can put it on skin. This would be one of the greatest Queer de Russis ever created. You know, this is... I haven't smelled the Guerlain Queer de Russi. I haven't smelled Creed's Queer de Russi. Um, but I've smelled a lot, you know, and, and I will do videos on them too. Like, um, this is Del Oro's uh, Russian Leather. This is a really good Queer de Russi that used to be uh, going around in the um, 1970s and 80s. I think this this was put out. Um, 
this this used to be a great value for money house now you have to pay hundreds on ebay for old bottles but uh, i mentioned the uh yukden by farina this will get its own review one day um there's other queer de russies that i've shown off on the channel before um there's just so many there's just so many russian leathers uh and and they'll they'll all get their own reviews i have a Del Oro Russian Leather 2 floating around somewhere. They, they did a part two as well, and that's fantastic. So, I mean, Russian leathers are, you know, they're 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 one of my one of my favorite uh types of, of fragrances. And so for this to for this to be issued or come out, you know, in the last, let's say in the modern times and and be like this, what a contribution. What a contribution to perfumery this is, I swear. You guys think I'm I'm just like saying these words? This is legitimately how I feel. This is, this is, um, I mean, this is special. This is special stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to cherish, I'm going to cherish just these couple drops that I have. Um, I probably won't get a bottle or look for a bottle because, you know, I like to wear my fragrances. That's part of you know, I'm not someone who wants to just look at these. I want to wear them, and um, and and I want to wear the piss out of some of them. You know what I mean? Uh, like today, I'm wearing this this Queer de Russie. I'm not going light, even though this is a rare, vintage, hard to find, discontinued. Ex you know, who knows what this would even go for if I threw this on eBay? Um, and what was crazy is it actually came sealed. So whenever I got this, he showed me the seal. Um, I had to open it up. It was, it was, uh, it still had kind of the, the, the seal from Chanel on it. And, um, so, you know, and I'm, I'm wearing that and I'm spray, 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 you know, when I, when I wear it spray. Uh, and so, man, this is one that easily could be a signature scent for me. That birch oil, that smokiness, the leather, it is just mind blowingly good. So, you don't always get these reviews from me. I mean, sometimes you get you get shit, you get, eh, it's so-so. That's kind of what I gave an Argos fragrance I reviewed within the last week. Eh, so-so. Not as bad as many people may think. I, 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 don't, I don't hate it, but not as good as some people say, you know. And I'm pretty honest about, you know, whether it's good, bad, uh, middle of the road. I'll tell you guys, you don't always get these kind of just... Hall of Fame blows my mind. It's just that, that garment fragrance um warning kind of ruins this for me because man if i could wear this like as a signature scent this would be up there this would be up there competing for the number one leather fragrance i think ever created so that's how that's honestly how i feel um so if you have experience with arige ladores queer de russie i would love to hear your thoughts thank you adam for sharing the, these precious few drops with me really 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 enjoyed getting to know this the last couple days even into the dry down man it is oh it's so violety and vanillic um into the dry down and yet the top is so animalic man that beaver tail oil it's something like i've never smelled before um Really, it should be used in more notes, more perfume. Uh, that, that should be used in more animalic perfume, Adam. So, all right. Thanks for watching. If you have uh, any comments on Queer de Russie perfumes or Riz Ladoria in general, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave them in the comments. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.